welcome back bitches to true crime tuesday so you're in for a wild one i know i said i wanted to get a little bit more like intense i don't know if i said that um yeah this one's a little squeamish this one's fucked up it's pretty gnarly so if you're eating i just i suggest you stop um this is kind of like a one hit wonder kind of story you know I don't know if you should call it, if I should call it that. But let's just get into it. So the year is 2008. A man named Tim McGlynn. Tim McGlynn. M-C-L-E-A-N. We're just going to call him Tim. He's a 22-year-old Canadian man. He's, you know, he's an, he's an active athlete. He's a beloved son, father. He's adventurous. He likes meeting new people. He was working at the carnival at the time. And he was also, at that day, it was July 30th, he was riding the Greyhound Canada bus along the Trans-Canada Highway, Manitoba. So it's about noon, and he's on the bus, and he's just chilling. Later on, this man named Vincent Lee gets on the bus. People say Vincent Lee was just nothing really out of the ordinary he had his sunglasses on he was about um six he was a tall man around six feet something weighed around 200 something pounds so he was a big dude like he had first sat by tim later moved and sat by the bus driver and then he sat next to him again tim looks over he doesn't really like think of anything of it he has his headphones in and he just kind of like closes his eyes again and leaves his head on the window. Vincent then proceeds to take a machete out of his fucking bag wherever the fuck he was carrying it and proceeds to start stabbing Tim in the neck and chest. Witnesses, so obviously there's fucking there's a bunch of people on the bus. I'm sure people are fucking screaming. He, witnesses said that he was just calmly, he was just stabbing this guy. Like, he was like a robot. Like, he had no expression on his face. And he's just, like, killing this man. And so, one of the people were like, you know, tell the bus driver to, like, stop the fucking bus. They all get off the bus. They head to the back. And they eventually, like, a few guys, just, like, try to get on and, like, try to see if they could help the man. But by the time they did that, they see that Vincent is now decapitating Tim's head so at this point Tim is is done it's fucking I can't even imagine so they obviously get off the bus because Vincent starts looking at them I'm sure it's fucking crazy looking his eyes and they basically barricade Vincent in the bus a uh, guy had eventually like drove past them they got some curl bars to make sure he doesn't get out they said he had a calmly approached the window and was just looking at them like calm and then just like drop the head and then he proceeded to bang his head against the window so they're basically in the middle of nowhere so they have to sit on the side of the road while this is happening while this man is pacing back and forth and the cops don't get there till fucking 8 8 30 at night so this happened around like two three o'clock in the afternoon and these people were on the side of the road vomiting crying because of what the fuck had just happened apparently when the cops showed up it, there was like a standoff they didn't know how to get this guy off the fucking bus he was you know pacing back and forth he started defiling tim's body he starts taking out his eyeballs he starts just eating his body he was yelling i'm never getting off this bus while just fucking up this poor guy right so eventually they tase his ass and when they did capture him they had found tim's nose ears and tongue in his pockets they had a bag up tim's body to take it out of the of the bus because it was just so horrific there was just so much shit going on he was just cutting up his body they eventually couldn't even find his eyes and parts of his hearts which had led to he ate them so let's talk about vincent for a second so vincent he is vincent lee had bad schizophrenia he was schizophrenia he was a chinese immigrant 
who moved to Canada, who was a computer engineer um, before he moved to Canada when he was in China. 2004 is in his early 30s, and when he starts hearing voices, I feel like once you start hearing voices and God is telling you, he said the voice of God started speaking to him. He said he didn't know he had schizophrenia. He never been treated for it, obviously. He was picked up before by cops because he was going like here and there because the voice of God had told him to. He was doing weird shit. He was carrying a machete on him. He had sold his laptop for like 60 bucks to a kid who later, you know, like told investigators, you know, what about this man. He was convinced that God wanted him to kill because aliens were going to attack everyone and this was his way of saving people and so he said that he he had to kill he was told to kill this guy tim on the bus and because that was the only way of saving everybody so this guy is obviously so far from reality he just surpassed he's in a whole nother fucking world right he's totally convinced that what he hears is is fucking god telling him right so he's When he was arrested, he had said, I don't know if this was when he was arrested or in court, he was just telling people, just kill me, just kill me. So he obviously seemed aware. There was an interview where they asked if he was happy and he said he could never be happy. The Canadian law was surprisingly, it was very lax requirements on mental illness at the time. I don't know how they are now. So basically, Lee had refused to hire a lawyer And when he did represent himself, he said he was not accountable of what he did to due to his untreated schizophrenia. And basically the judge agreed. And he, as a result of this, he was committed to a high end security psychiatric ward where he was like evaluated and treated for his, you know, his condition. He was later won the right to be freed. He is a free man to this day. May 8, 2015 was when he was released and he changed his name to Will Baker. So before he was, he was thoroughly monitored at first, but I mean, not anymore. He's living anonymously. During the Greyhound, um, during around this time, the Greyhound was like running a campaign that read, there's a reason you've never heard of bus rage. And then they were like, oh, wait, we need to take this shit down. This isn't really appropriate. And then later, PETA, you know PETA, PETA, right? They wanted to run an ad in, where do they want to run an ad? It was in a local newspaper. They were trying to compare this murder to eating animals. And the local newspaper was basically like, go fuck yourself. You're not going to run this ad. Um, so, yeah, this guy was... Will Baker, he's a free man with no obligations, restrictions, and he is living an independent life right now. Whew. What a story. What a story. So I just can't even imagine this poor man's fucking family. This kid, I looked at pictures of this guy. So young. So fucking young. So much life to fucking live, dude. Like, imagine you're just, like, listening to your... Your fucking headphones. Oh, my God. You just can't even imagine it. And just those people on the bus. There's, like, interviews if you guys want to see on YouTube. People talking about the horrific scene. And, you know, just their experience. Obviously, not everybody talks because it's so fucking traumatizing. It's just a traumatizing experience for fucking everybody that was on that bus that day. And... Yeah, told you guys it was going to be a gnarly one. I hope I didn't pass, skip anything, but I mean, that's pretty basically it. I don't know how old that man is now. He's probably like not even that old. But even if you are treated for your mental illness and you seem like you're getting better now, like how do you just forget that you can't? You ate somebody and chopped them up. You can't. I'm sorry. No. He should not be out. I'm, I think that's pretty insane how some of these laws work. I don't understand. Some people are in jail longer for fucking weed. Like, make that make sense. I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole. 
But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this fucked up true crime story. Be safe with who you said next to you. Just never know. Make sure, like, just keep your eyes open. Don't have your eyes closed. Especially in public places, transportation. Don't keep your eyes closed. Like, you know what I mean. Just be safe, guys. People are crazy. Obviously, you can never fucking expect that to happen. You can't. You would never expect that to happen. Um, R.I.P. Tim. I don't even want to say his last name because I'm going to fuck it up. McGlynn. McLean, McLean, McLean. I'm not saying it right. Thank you guys for watching. Stay safe. Bye.